Good evening YouTube, this is the Atheist Killer, AK, back with a brand new Ownage video, where tonight we're going to put another sorry excuse, sorry victim, illogical, incoherent, pathetic atheist behind my zoo walls. Who is this victim? He goes by the name of Philosotroll. He has a website called philosotroll.com, and as many of you already know, he's attempted to defeat the Elliot argument. How did he do this? Well, initially, he had an article up on his website where he tried to debunk the Elliot argument. So, I didn't know who the guy was. I tried to find out. But in the meantime, I made a response video almost word for word, sentence by sentence, completely destroying, demolishing, and crushing his entire article. And I'm going to link that video to you right now at the bottom of this page. So after that, after I recorded my response video to his pathetic argument, his pathetic article, I finally found out who he was. And I went on his Facebook page where he attempted to tell me he was uninterested in a live, one-on-one, -on -one, public, real-time debate. Now, normally, I would not engage in such tactics. I only like to debate people live, one-on-one. -on -one. But I gave him the benefit of the doubt because he had already invested so much time in writing his initial argument, his initial article, which I destroyed. So I told him that we could have the discussion on his Facebook page. Now, this is where we get into the heart and the meat of the story. Now, before I begin, let me just remind you that me and Philo Sotrol, we had a discussion for nearly six hours on his Facebook page. <laughs> And let me remind you, after nearly six hours, self-ownage is just a really, really sad, pathetic way to end things. I mean, punking out and not answering questions could quite possibly be the pinnacle of cowardice. <laughs> so what exactly happened? Well, this guy, Philosotrol, he tried to prove the Elliot argument was invalid. And how did he do this? Well, his strategy was to prove that the Elliot argument was a fallacy of refication. After he couldn't do that, he then tried to make the claim that my acronym STE, which stands for Space, Time, or Eternal, was in fact rational and logical. <laughs> Unfortunately, he was asked the same question five straight times and refused to answer. You will see all of that at the end of the six hour ownage. At the, at the end of the six hour discussion that we had that I'm gonna post for you in a minute. But besides all that, he also made numerous errors. He had no idea how matter was made in the Big Bang model. And he tried to say red shifts and microwave radiation background were not evidence that space and time had a finite beginning, etc., etc. <laughs> the funniest thing about all of this is after the six hour discussion, he then went on to write another article where he claimed victory. God bless his little heart for his weak attempts. It's really comical. But let's get into the real facts of our entire discussion and how it all went down. Let's talk about this. So first of all, let's talk about this fallacy of refication. The definition of refication is this. It generally refers to making something real or bringing it into being or making something concrete. But what's the definition of Refication fallacy. I'm going to read this to you. Refication, also known as concretism, or the fallacy of misplaced concreteness, is a fallacy of ambiguity. When an abstraction, abstract belief, or hypothetical construct is treated as if it were concrete, or if it were a real concrete event or physical entity. Hmm. Well, this is my position. In the Elliot argument, number one, are we treating time as if it were concrete? No, we are treating time and defining time as it is, a concept and a measurement of events. Time is not concrete, and the Elliot argument is not claiming time is concrete. Time cannot cause anything to exist, and itself, and itself was not sufficiently caused. Time is a human concept and measurement of events. I had to keep beating this into his head. So number two, are we treating time in the Elliot argument like a real event or being real when actually it's not real? No, time is real and we are treating it as, as such. 
Even my opponent, Philosotrol, admitted in our discussion that time was real. So number three, are we treating time as a physical entity? No. Again, we are treating time in the Eliot argument exactly as it is, a concept and human measurement of events. Nowhere in the Eliot argument do we assume time is a physical entity. Therefore, the Eliot argument does not commit the fallacy of revocation and remains undefeated. Next, when Philosotrol didn't know where matter came from in the Big Bang model, I scratched my head and had to ask myself, who the heck am I even debating right now? <laughs> you don't know what the Big Bang model proposes? Really? That's crazy to me. But besides that, what really struck me as odd was that he claimed microwave radiation, red shifts, um, and an expanding universe is not evidence that the universe had a finite beginning or starting point. Yes, it is. It's completely evidence that the universe had a very distinct starting point and a finite beginning. How? Because if the universe is expanding and you rewind the clock backwards, it takes us to an initial starting point. Come on, man. This is crazy that I'm debating or having a discussion with someone who does not understand this concept. It's insane. So he failed to prove my argument was a fallacy of verification, which was really his only hope and where he had placed all of his eggs. He failed numerous times throughout the discussion on even understanding basic models like what the Big Bang proposed. But besides owning Philosotro, I wanted to make something very clear because during the debate, I mean, during the discussion, I said something in a way that I didn't know would later be taken so literally. You see, during our discussion, I made the statement that time was sufficiently caused to exist. And once it began to exist, then becomes a necessary cause for everything else to exist. I did not know that he would take this statement so literally. And once Philosoph Troll jumped on it, I had to let him know exactly what I meant when I said this. You see, what I was saying is that time is a measurement of events. The universe was what was sufficiently caused, and at which point time was given its starting point. I admit, I should have been more clear early on in our discussion about this. However, later, before we were finished, I did make my stance clear numerous times. But someone reading our discussion may think this was a contradiction of some kind and may think that I was flip-flopping my stances on the issue. This is not true. My stance is, and has always been, the universe was caused to exist, at which point time was given its starting point. I got lazy and figured he would know what I meant. Time itself was not sufficiently caused and cannot be the sufficient cause of anything else. Time was more of a result of the universe being caused. Important to remember, time is a concept and measurement of events. I've said this many times and I know I need to beat it into some of your heads. It doesn't actually cause anything to exist itself. Um, so again, Philosotrol didn't even come close to defeating me. God bless his little heart for attempting, but honestly, the Elliot argument cannot be defeated. It's based on scientific facts, research, evidence, and human logic. That's why it remains irrefuted. So in conclusion, I defeated him initially on his uh, first article, and then again in a six hour long discussion where I demolished him. So be easy, man, God bless. Atheism is dead. The Elliot argument pulled the trigger and philosotrol is another pet that I own and now lives in my zoo. Here is a copy of our entire six hour long discussion. Make sure you take a good hard look at how it ends off because it's quite comical. Five times in a row, man, he refuses to answer a question. I love y'all, I'm out. Chad Elliott, the AK Atheist Killer. Another one down, I'll see you soon. Bye. Peace! Need his name up in lights, he just wants to be heard. Whether it's the beat of the mic, he feels.
so unlike everybody else alone In spite of the fact that some people still think that they know him But fuck him, he knows the code It's not about the salary, it's all about reality And making some noise, making a story Making sure his click stays up That means when he puts it down, talks picking it up Let's go Who the hell is he anyway? He never really talks much Never concerned with status, but still even in starstruck Humble through opportunities, given despite the fact That many misjudge him cause he makes a living from writing raps Put it together himself, got a picture connects Never asking for someone's help, help. but to get some respect He's only focused on what he wrote, his will is beyond reach And now it all unfolds, the skill of an artist This is 20% skill, 80% fear, be 100% clear Cause Ryu was ill, who would've thought he'd be the one that set the west in flames And I heard him wreck it with the crystal method, name of the game Came back, dropped mega death, took him to church, I like bleach man Ryu had the stupidest verse, this dude is the truth Now everybody giving them guess spots, his stocks through the roof I heard he fuck him with that stock This is 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of will 5% pleasure, 50% pain, and 100% reason to remember Sick and he's spitting fire in Mike. Got him out the dryer, he's hot. Found him in Fort Minor with top. But a fucking nihilist porcupine. He's a prick, he's a cop. The type women wanna be with them rappers. Hope he gets shot. Eight years in the making, patiently waiting to blow. Now the record with your notice taking over the globe. He's got a partner in crime. This shit is equally dope. You won't believe the kind of shit that comes out of this kid's throat top. He's not your everyday on the block He knows how to work with what he's got Making his way to the top He don't think it's a common on his name People keep asking him, was it? Given that Bertha doesn't stand for an act But him, no, he's living proof Let him rock in the booth He'll get you buzzing quicker than a shot of vodka with juice Juice. Him and his crew are known around as one of the best Dedicated to what they do and give 100% Forget Mike, nobody really knows how or why He works so hard, it seems like he's never got time Because he writes every note and he writes every line and I've seen him at work when that light goes on in his mind It's like a design is written in his head every time Before he even touches a key or speaks in a rhyme And those motherfuckers he runs with the kids that he signed Ridiculous, without even trying, how do they do it? This is 10% luck, 20% skill 15% concentrated power of will 5% pleasure, 